Welcome to Morning Mimosas, where we value human life, criminal justice, healing, and education for the Black and minority communities. What that entails, wrongful convictions, missing persons, cold cases, breaking stigmas, and educating with one goal at the end, making sure that we are doing effective change, one person at a time. Hello, Morning Mimosa viewers. My name is Holly. I am the founder. Um, today, we don't have our co-host, Fatu, but sending her our love as she is always with us. As you guys know, this is Morning Mimosas, where we value criminal justice, healing, and education for the Black and minority communities. Guys, we have a special, special treat for today. We have Councilwoman Stacey Gilmore of District 11 here in Denver, Colorado on Morning Mimosas. I am truly honored to have her on my platform. And we're just gonna have a, a little chat and just talk about com community and all the other issues that affect community and what we can do and what our parts are to greater that community. But before we do that, we're gonna give her our Morning Mimosas welcome first, because you guys know how we do. We have to give her the proper welcome. Hello, hello, Miss Gilmore. Welcome to Morning Mimosa. Hello, great to join you. Uh, excited to be here. Yes, ma'am. So, Councilwoman Gilmore, let's let's get started. Let's start with who are we speaking to today? Who is Stacy Gilmore? Ah, oh well. Uh, that's not a question I get asked every day. So let me think about it. Ah, well, you know, I am a passionate community member. I love my neighborhood. I love the people that live in Montbello and the far Northeast. It's not only friends, but it's family. And so, you know, I'm a community person and I'm a mom and a partner and a, a godmom and, you know, really want to make sure um, that we're supporting those whose voices have been silenced or marginalized for hundreds of years. And so that's really who I am is making sure that I'm creating space for folks to share their stories and their thoughts and ideas about how we can do better in not only the far Northeast, but in Denver. I absolutely love it. So Miss Gilmore, I was actually doing some research about you and it looks like you are third generation Coloradoan and you were born and raised in the city of Bush. Is that, is that information correct? Yeah, so I, I am a third generation um, Coloradan. Um, I was raised in Brush, Colorado. And so it's out on the Northeastern Plains. Whenever um, anybody asks me where it's at, it's on your way to Nebraska. And so it was a small rural agricultural town. And um, as soon as I turned 18, I left and moved up to Denver because it didn't have the freedom that I wanted uh, to become who I thought I wanted to be in life. And, you know, also came up to Denver to go to college. Um, I've got my undergraduate at Metro. Uh, and so it was a, a great move and, but definitely understand small town America and move to the city so um, we could have diversity and inclusivity and do some good work uh, here. That is awesome. So um, if you could tell the people, because um, you are District 11, so that means you service Montbello in the Northeast. Um, so why why District 11? I know I know we spoke about it, but I just want the viewers to hear why why this district, why Montbello or the Northeast um, means so much to you. 
Oh, well, you know, when I moved to Denver, uh, I lived, you know, closer to downtown and uh, actually met my husband um, at a fishing clinic when we were both wrapping up from college and, um, you know, quickly started talking and we were both wildlife biologists and, you know, he was like, well, what are you? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, what are you? I can tell. And I'm like, well, I'm half white and I'm half Latina. And he's like, oh my God, I'm half black and half Japanese. And we're both wildlife biologists. And I was like, wow, that's cool. So, you know, how was your family? How'd your family react to you saying you wanted to be a wildlife biologist and being able to share our stories and, you know, um, come together from that standpoint. And when we started looking for a neighborhood, to settle down in, uh, right away, we looked at Montbello and we were like, we're going to put down roots. And so we actually built a home uh, in Montbello. And my husband's family has been out there for over 50 years. His dad was in the Air Force. A lot of military folks uh, settled in Montbello. And then, you know, we raised our three kids out there. I have a 27-year-old son, a a 24-year-old daughter, and then a 19-year-old daughter. And so raised our three kids out there and started getting active in the neighborhood. Um, I would do volunteer work at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal National Wildlife Refuge um, and do volunteer work out there, but then also founded a registered neighborhood organization called Montbello 2020 uh, back in, I think it was 2008, that um, I founded that with a couple of different community members so that we could strategically make sure to get whatever we needed to get for Montbello because we know historically there has been a lack of resources provided to communities of color. And, you know, my kids all went to school at Marama Elementary and Green Valley Ranch, still have family who lives in Montbello and in GVR. And so, you know, becoming the representative for District 11, I represent about um, half of the Montbello community. And then I have Parkfield, Green Valley Ranch, and High Point, along with all of Denver International Airport. So it's the largest geographic council district in the city and in the best district. We have such a strong sense of community. And before I got elected, um, we had had a lot of traffic accidents and you live in Montbello, so you'll know exactly the intersection that I'm talking about at Avenue and Chambers Road. And so, you know, there were stop signs out there and it's just too busy of an intersection and so we were able to um before i even got elected get a traffic signal out there at chambers road and 56th and now you know two weekends ago we opened up the brand new 56th avenue um that's been widened has medians signalized intersections um it's a 52 million dollar project that when i was elected eight years ago i was told it would never happen and i'm like oh we are so organized get ready we're gonna come out and we got it done May I say that, um, first and foremost, thank you guys for that. Because when I first um, moved to Montbello, was that nine years ago? And I would um, drive down 56th by Chambers. I used to get so nervous at that intersection. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm grateful that you guys came along and just made that happen. Because like, mm -mm, I'm telling you, especially because it's right, I think, 56 and Chambers is right, the the Rocky Mountain Arsenal is right behind it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it was just craziness. But I appreciate that. So let me just go ahead and give you your flowers. Aww. I think it says <laughs> well, now, thank right? You. Flowers. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And you know, it was community because um we had to put that project um on the ballot. So it had to be a bond project because the city in our general fund, you know, we don't have $52 million for a big project like that. So we um, put together a bond package and then it went out to the voters. And so you probably voted 
um, for that money to get allocated for that project. And so I have to say thanks right back to all the folks that are voting and are really active during those elections because voting matters. It counts. Yes. I've been telling people that a lot lately. Please, please, please get out and vote, especially because next year's election is very, it's going to be very interesting. That, that's all I'm going to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, what are your plans as a council member? Um, I think that's like one of the biggest things that a lot of people want to know. Like, what are you going to do as far as I guess the things that also pertain to morning mimosas as far as like criminal justice, the healing and the educating. Cause I, I did read, um, I did go on your website and I did see that you're very passionate about safety and protection, um, job security, food security. So all that pertains to everything that we talk about. What are your plans as far as whichever one you want to start with? Cause it's, it's a lot, um, yeah. oh. wherever you want to start. This well, it's a lot it was, yeah, yeah, you know, um, oh, lots of big plans. I mean, I, I'm trying to be very selective because I'm, um, you know, I've started my third and final term. So in Denver, um, we're term limited. And so um, an elected term is four years and we can run for three. And so I'm starting my third and final term um, as a District 11 council person. And, you know, my priorities haven't necessarily changed much from when I ran because I want there to be plenty of affordable housing for folks in our city. I want young people to be able to buy a home or a condo so that you can roll your student loans into your mortgage and get a better interest rate and pay that monthly house note, but then also build equity in that property. So then when you do decide to sell or if you have a medical condition, if you want to take a big trip, you can borrow against that equity that you built up mm -hmm. in the home or condo that you bought. And so, you know, that's something really important. Um, Anti-displacement sort of tools or mitigating against gentrification. I am amazed, honestly, because I'm one person that we have been able to strategically with all the partners and nonprofits in the neighborhood, Montbello has not gentrified okay. in the last eight years. And when I got elected in 2015, the economy was hot, but we kept them out. Whenever there were signs in the neighborhood that said, we'll buy your home for cash, mm. community members were collecting those up they'd come dump them off at my office and I'd get rid of them. And then I would call that business and leave them a message and say, Hey, you don't know me, but I'm the elected representative for this neighborhood. And what you're doing is gross. It is dishonest. You shouldn't be paying anybody cash for a home. I don't want you out here. My neighborhood doesn't want you out here. Stop doing this. We're picking up your signs and throwing them away. And we pushed back on that. So, you know, affordable housing, access to food, healthy food options is always a priority. Um, when I got elected, um, right before I got elected, the Safeway at Green Valley Ranch Boulevard and Chambers Road closed down yeah. with no notice. Everybody yeah. was like, what the heck? Where's our Safeway going? Yeah. And so we lost mm -hmm. a Safeway and we got a Walmart neighborhood market in there, which isn't always what people want. And so really started working mm -hmm. on um, driving developers around the neighborhood. I'd meet them at my office um, off of I-70 in Peoria. And I'd be like, I'll drive. Let's go get a coffee. And I had them in my car and I would purposely drive them through Montbello, show them the neighborhood, talk about the open air canals that we have for our stormwater drainage. That was done as a cost savings measure. 
You don't see that anywhere else in any neighborhoods in Denver. It's all piped. There's a reason why we have those open air drainage canals because they did it on the cheap. And so pointing that out and saying, you know, how are you going to help me make sure that residents in my neighborhood have access to grocery stores and have access to retail? And, you know, we worked together and we got the Costco at I-70 and Green Valley Ranch. We also got a Sprouts and a Natural Grocers. I'm still waiting and working with the King Supers um, out there. We're trying to, you know, do that work, but food access is always really important. And then, you know, something that I know that you share a, uh, 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 you know, a, a passion about and, and trying to do better and differently is definitely around safety. And when we talk about the over policing that we see, especially in communities of color, it's because our neighborhoods have not been built with proper lighting, with proper traffic infrastructure, with environmental design that helps reduce crime, that helps people feel safer in their neighborhoods. And, you know, a, a quick story here um, during, you know, it was actually before 2020 and George Floyd um, and, and everything happening around that civil rights movement. But we in Montbello, because of the drainage canals, our streets are curvy, like how water would flow. And so mm -hmm. right next to Silverman Park, we were starting to track people driving 50, 60 miles an hour in the neighborhood. And then the park wasn't being activated. And so we went out there with our Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and we're like, okay, you're going to see how fast people are driving out here. And then you'll put the proper infrastructure in. That's logically what you would think would happen. Well, we go out there, they clock people driving 50, 60 miles an hour, and we had to do a study. And so they wanted to get pedestrian counts and understand how many pedestrians were walking to the park so that that would warrant us getting a crosswalk and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so we're out there and there's not a lot of people coming to the park because I was like, People don't walk here because they drive. Because if you have a baby in a stroller or an older adult, nobody wants to get hit walking right. to the park. Right. And so the consultant that was working with them, they were like, Councilwoman, we're not getting the pedestrian counts. Um, this isn't going to warrant a crosswalk. And we know that you really want the crosswalk and, you know, stop signs, et cetera, could you put out on Facebook or could you call some people and ask them to come out here and help us get these counts up? And I was like, no, I cannot <laughs> because you're not going to tokenize us right. to do what's right out here. And so we pushed and pushed and pushed and, and I'll send you over the, the article link to it. Um, but Denver police department trying to help slow people down, decided that they were going to do traffic enforcement at this same intersection. And so I would drive by there and there was one afternoon that I drove by and I saw a police officer pull over somebody and I flipped back around so I could park on the other side and watch what was happening. And he had pulled over a young black man probably a teenager. And, you know, of course, gave him the stuff. The cop walks back to his car and the kid, of course, had his hands at 10 and two on the steering wheel. And the kid just sat there and he put his head down on the steering wheel and just kept it there. And I'm watching because I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, what's going on. And so, you know, everything transpired and the kid got a ticket, et cetera, and he went on his way. But seeing that firsthand where we as community are trying to advocate for safety 
it gets misconstrued and turned back on us that now you're going to give a kid a ticket and thank God that was all that happened because we know that traffic stops can go in a very negative, dangerous way very, very quickly. And then at like the next commander's meeting, the cops were really excited that they'd been doing traffic enforcement. They gave out 700 speeding tickets during the month of June when we were trying to do this. What a systems failure. Why were the cops not calling our Department of Transportation saying there is a system failure out here? You mm -hmm. need to put in crosswalks and stop signs. You need to slow down traffic. The the bureaucracy is all right there. And, and I honestly feel like my experience as an elected is give and, and I share that openly so that others can learn from it and understand that you're going to be told no immediately because that's how the system operates. You've got to be persistent and strategic to break that system down. And now we have a roundabout in that area to slow down traffic. People can walk to the park, but it's those sort of things, especially around police accountability and creating safe neighborhoods um, will always, always be my priorities for the community for sure. I absolutely love that. Um, I just, just want to say that 700 in that one month is a lot. Um, but you know, mm -hmm. um, as long as we have you councilwomen, you know, things will change. Well, that's why we're here for. We're here to do effective change, not just talk about the change, but mm -hmm. actually be about the change. You know, um, one of the things about um, Morning Mimosas and me and my co-host, Ms. Fatu, um, we're both going back to school um, to become um, investigators. So we want to make sure that we're also doing our parts because, you know, people sometimes just sit back and they're just always complaining, oh, this isn't being changed or this isn't being changed. But what are you doing to be a part of the change? So I just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you for the information today. It's been absolutely amazing. So Councilwoman Gilmore, before we get out of here, do you have anything else you want to say to District 11 or our morning mimosa viewers? Because there's a lot of them. Oh, well, oh, thank you. Well, um, so glad you're going back to school because I think the, the investigations piece is so important uh, where you can have somebody helping you in these different scenarios. And, you know, something that I would really ask your listeners and viewers to pay attention to is, you know, how we kind of started out where I was, um, you know, asking the mayor, how are you developing your 2024 budget? How are you doing the house 1000, which is really a shelter 1000, like, you, nobody's housed if you're keeping folks with a roof over their head for 14 days or even 30 days. Mm -hmm. That's not housing, that's sheltering. But what we're finding is, and, and I'll send you over the map, what we're finding is because real estate in communities of color has historically been deflated economically, a lot of the hotels that Mayor Johnston is buying up and proposing to use for sheltering options are along the Quebec corridor, which is a historic African-American community along the Peoria corridor. And now we're concerned that he's looking at the tower corridor. And so the concentration of poverty in communities of color is my biggest concern. And that's where I would really ask your listeners to pay attention and ask those questions. Because when we know in Montbello, for example, for 50 years, we haven't had access to healthcare right in our neighborhood. We haven't had access to entrepreneurial incubator businesses to help grow small businesses. We historically haven't had any of those supports. So on top of that, we're now talking about possibly Crown Plaza 
on the boundary of Denver and Aurora. So Crown Plaza right up there at I-70 in Chambers, yeah. that is in Aurora. Right. We're hearing rumblings that Aurora might be in partnership with Denver looking at acquiring that Crown Plaza for sheltering. So my question is, and what I would ask your viewers to ask is, what are we going to do to support better the residents, the longtime residents of Montbello, who many are on fixed incomes, who many are at threat of missing one house payment, mm -hmm. and then they become homeless? How are we going to support the people who have already been here but haven't had those resources? And now you're going to add on additional sheltering options, which we always want to help migrants, newcomers, and people experiencing homelessness. But we need to be honest about we need access to those resources, too. And so it being a yes and scenario. Otherwise, why aren't you looking at affluent neighborhoods in along Wash Park or mm -hmm. in South Denver? Why aren't you mm -hmm. buying up hotels out there to provide shelter to as well, instead of making it like the new redlining and having everybody who's struggling in one geographic location and area? And so that would be really the question I would ask your viewers to monitor and ask. You guys heard it here. You guys are listening to, and you guys live in the Montbello and the Denver area, please ask yourself this question. Once again, thank you so much, Councilwoman Stacey Gilmore, for being on Morning Mimosas. We truly appreciate your insight, and we truly appreciate everything that you do. And Morning Mimosas will support you during your last term and whatever else you have going on after that. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit more. Yes, ma'am. And as you guys know, this is Morning Mimosas, where we value criminal justice, healing, and education for the Black and minority communities. Until next time, see you guys later.